Okay, this first view of Duplessis and Strickland, we're gonna look at this really nice question mark kick. The reason I like to look at this angle is because it's very good at showing us hip range of motion, especially in the open chain or when the foot is not planted on the ground. Okay, so there's, it's gonna be cut off a little bit over here just because of reasons, okay? So as he starts to rotate his trunk, his hip is already in an abducted position. So he starts to kind of flex the hip and then as he rotates the trunk, it kind of becomes this triplanar motion really quickly. So hip flexion and then abduction, all right, for muscles like the rectus femoris and the iliopsoas and the TFL when it comes to flexion, and then the TFL and glute med when it comes to uh, abduction. So at this question mark kick is really cool because you're, for those of you who don't know what a question mark kick is, you fake low, essentially you fake lower to the body, and then you use kind of the whip of the leg to, to bring it around and come high. But the, the, the common misconception is that that movement is coming from the knee and it's actually coming from the hip. Some of the movement comes from the knee. Uh, you get some tibial rotation there, but most of the movement is coming from the hip. So as he flexes and abducts, he starts to internally rotate the hip with the hip already in several degrees of flexion. And then as it kind of rotates, you can kind of see that rotate along the line of the femur. Okay, so it's kind of this rotational movement with our frame of reference being at the femur. And then he brings it around, that right arm just hanging out there is not enough, and it lands really well. The ankle's nice and plantar flex, he makes contact really well here. So just a really nice view of Duplessis' incredible range of motion and ability to access that range of motion in a fighting situation. Okay, so this next view is a classic blitz from Duplessis. The first thing I want you to notice, look at his hips and look at his shoulders. He's already kind of starting this view in that kind of separated range of motion. I wanna show you uh, how this can actually help us transfer energy through the trunk all the way through the extremity. Okay, so for those of you who have watched the channel before, you know we talk about this, and this is not necessarily something that you should do, it's just something that he is doing. Okay, we see this a lot in really good strikers, or <laughs> in this case, a goofy striker like Duplessis, but he is very good, obviously, and showed us that at UFC 312. So see how he starts with his hips kind of facing us, and then his, the line of his shoulders, if you were to draw a line, is facing Strickland. So as he kind of floats forward, you can see that, almost think of it like a, you're, you're taking, almost like a popsicle stick and turning it and then letting it go. So it's almost like you're letting that recoil go. And so that stretch reflex, it's what this is called, is happening in the external oblique on the side of the arm throwing the punch. Uh, and then the muscles that we really can't see very much right now, if we kind of move forward a little bit, we can see the anterior delt and the pec major the muscles in the front of the shoulder that are taking advantage of this. So almost think of it like a coil, and that coil is unraveling, so the shoulders are now starting to, whoops. So the shoulders are now starting to catch up to the hips. That stretch reflex comes from an eccentric elongation, so those muscles are put on stretch. Then they switch from eccentric to concentric in an amortization phase. And then there comes a really forceful concentric contraction that's more powerful because of that eccentric elongation. And then obviously he's got really good follow through here with that overhand. And you can't really see it, but the muscles like the serratus anterior are, are protracting the scapula for better stability whenever you make contact. That energy that, that happens that's delivered to Sean Strickland's face and to, du, and to Duplessis' fist as he's making contact. And then we get the classic blitz where he ducks and throws another overhand, but it gets blocked. So. Really good view there. I'm not gonna show it all the way through because of copyright reasons, but I really liked that view. And this spinning elbow is my favorite one. So the reason why I like this one so much is because it really shows his ability to rotate the thoracolumbar and the thoracic spine, his thoracic mobility, which you can see there. So let's back up just a little bit. I want you to focus on his hips. I don't know if you'll be able to see his hips just the way that I'm gonna to have to cut the video, but his left hip is extending and externally rotating, this time in the closed chain or with the foot planted on the ground. This is gonna give him the ability to kind of transfer energy through that kinetic chain and starting from the ground, transferring energy through the body all the way to the extremity, in this case, his elbow. Okay, so he plants, he externally rotates and extends, which gives him a little bit of lumbopelvic rotation to the right, but not a ton. Okay, so his hips and his 
shoulders travel together in that transverse plane. His arm is in an, an abducted position, but he's performing a, a movement called horizontal abduction okay, with muscles like the posterior delt, and then retraction with muscles like the rhomboids and the middle trap, so, or scapular adduction if you want to be really specific, but it is a component of retraction. Okay, so we've got lumbar or lumbopelvic rotation. The hips and the shoulders are moving relatively in the same plane until he makes contact, and then you see a really good follow through. So look at how much separation there is there. So his shoulders are probably in a 45 degree angle in an opposite direction. They're, they're actually, they're probably at about 90 degrees because the hips are facing almost a, exactly away from Sean and then his, his shoulders are right at Sean. So I would say they're probably within that transverse plane about at a 90 degree angle. And so that rotation happens along the, a part of the body called the thoracolumbar junction. So where the lumbar spine, the low back, meets that thoracic spine is where a lot of that rotation happens. And so if he just kind of stopped rotating here, you could argue that the strike may not have been as effective, uh, but we don't know that. So we can't really make assumptions about you know, that behavior and skill acquisition here. We're just looking at what did happen. So really good uh, spinal rotation and a display again of his really good mobility and how he accesses it in fights. Really great showing, super happy for Duplessis.